Well, here, I got three more, so, yeah. I'm going to try a different recording setup this time. You know, if, you, if you want to talk about the next stuff, you can just, if you ever want to talk about those things, like examples, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Test, test, that's good. You went to the talk, or the other part of the talk? I went to the but first, yeah. yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've done big coding stuff like that, so. <laughs> I don't know, whenever I see the talks like that, I'm thinking, boy, back in the day, we didn't do that because we just didn't have the data. We yeah. really did not, you know, we didn't really know. Now people don't do it because they don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it was, yeah. Yeah. Was there a punchline? Did you, you no, I mean, that's kind of the, what I was pushing her toward, basically. Is like, so her whole thing, there was just a talk in the political science department. This person looked at, uh, Kimberly Turner looked at uh, um, different large social movements like the Arab Spring or whatever, in Tunisia and everything. And um, kind of what she was saying is that you, whether you win or lose is a very multidimensional thing. So she's trying to c collect like all different kinds of concessions made and, and then kind of re-aggregate that into a new measure of whether someone wins or loses. But I, I just, to me, the point is when, of using more disaggregated data is you don't have to re-aggregate. That's, to me, that's what the point of it was. So that's kind of what I was pushing her toward. And also, she, she said that what I really need is, we needed to know whether these things had failed or succeeded. But I mean, I feel like, the, like just the pattern of giving concessions, a pattern of repression, that itself is its most, most interesting. So, I don't know. so in that sense, there wasn't a real strong punchline. It was more of a descriptive kind of measurement exercise. Mm -hmm. 
This is gonna keep. I know. What does Peter Pan do? What does Peter Pan do? He's not like, what's his super, like, kind of super What is his superpower? Bringing, bringing happiness to the hearts <laughs> of the children. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to make the joke of like, oh, I'm about to like insert thing that he does, but then I forgot what he did. He can fly. That's right. You can fly too. Like, if you believe. Like birds can fly. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you a bird? <laughs> we'll do some network game stuff today too. If you're just in that, that was when you just said, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, we'll do. Well, I think we'll sort of conclude our little this little part of the incomplete information games. The next, I think, next time we'll start doing the ones and trees. So this is be the like the little. I think the end of our little thing about partitions. But but still, I like it so much. I spend a lot of time on it. So um, this is. We'll just do two examples. One is kind of. Um, this is from a folk tale, and um, I got this book in a garage sale. It kind of just reading this book, this kid's book, kind of started me down a path, which was. Uh, um, Basically saying that a lot of game theory ar arguments are actually um, just restatements of what people knew a long time ago. So in other words, we think we're very fancy. We use game theory in mathematically fancy ways, which is true. I mean, people did not use mathematical game theory 100 years ago, but they did think very carefully about strategic situations. And in particular, I argue that um, sort of uh, marginalized peoples, in this case, people, you know, African-Americans who were slaves at the time, you know, women. So I have this whole thing about Jane Austen, women who have, seem to have less power during that time. So the pe people who are more, you know, marginalized or didn't have, just seem to have the outward trappings of power were actually extremely, for them, strategic thinking was very, very important. Okay, they actually developed game theory in some sense, what I call folk game theory, in a much greater degree than um, than other people. So when we think of like game theory, we often think about like war or tactics or, you know, kind of grand strategy. But actually, some of the best game theorists were people like, you know. One of my friends was in, in prison, and he was a Polish democracy activist. And in prison, he said people are very super high professional, you know, because often making one move really makes a big difference. So it makes sense. And so, you know, so people in prison, slaves, um, you know, there's a whole sort of trickster tradition. And, and in Austin's novels, Jane Austen's novels, they were the young women because for them, being able to set something up and run the right way was could be extremely important. Like. If you got, you know, it could be really a, a huge, make a huge difference in your life. So, and the idea is like, if you're already powerful, you don't have to think strategically too well because people, things are already, hap you know, going your way anyways. You don't think about it. So, that's kind of the argument. So, this book kind of started me thinking about this, and um, so, yeah, you know, I'll just tell you the story, and, and, and it, it captures, I think, an argument which is um, what we've been doing in this class. So, this is a, a classic uh, African American slave folk tale, Flossie and the Fox. This just starts like this. So Flossie delivers a basket. She's a young girl of eggs to Ms. Viola's place. Her mother warns her about the fox who loves eggs. Flossie's never seen a fox. Well, a fox is just a fox. That's not so scary. So Flossie encounters a strange creature who announces that he's a fox. The fox says, a little girl like you should be simply terrified of me. Flossie replies, I've never seen a fox before, so why should I be scared of you? To prove that he's a fox, Fox invites Flossie to feel his thick fur. Flossie replies that he must be a rabbit. Mm. Flustered Fox said he has a bushy tail. Flossie says, oh, then you must be a squirrel. A hound, hound spots Fox and chases after him. As he dashes away, Fox shouts that the, the, that the hound knows who he is. Like I told you, I am a fox. Flossie says, I know, and proceeds along unharassed Miss Wheelis. So this is kind of a cute little story. Um, what's going on here? So why is this an interesting kind of non-trivial story in some sense? So how does, in other words, how does, how does Flossie manage to keep the fox away? From? She huh? knows huh? the fox is a fox. What no? Like she knows right. the fox is a fox, but the fox doesn't know that she knows. Yeah, exactly right, exactly right, right, right. Yeah. She knows that the fox is a fox. But she doesn't know the fox. She doesn't let the fox know that, right? Yeah. The fox doesn't know. The flossy knows that, right? Okay. So um, let me see if I. Okay. So how would I model that using our setup? 
Okay. So, huh? there's two players. Yeah, let's see. What does Flossie do? Because Flossie's action to his actions. Is, well, I guess the fox is a little easier, right? What are the fox's actions? Attack or not? Yeah, attack, right, essentially, right? So attack, fox could be so. And philosophies, I think, are fear or not, or something, but fear is not really an action, right? It's more like... Run away or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's like give up or, yeah, exactly. You fight back. Exactly. So I'm going to say something like defend or not. You can see what I use here. The fox is trying to intimidate philosophy to just run away and giving up, right? Not defending. Okay. Well, those are the actions. We've got two and six. Um, what are the other things? Oh. Like states of the world. Yeah, states of the world. <laughs> what is this going to be? Fossey knows that the fox is a fox. Yeah, exactly. Fossey right. doesn't know. Right. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, exactly. So let's see. Okay. <laughs> so one is what? So what is the fox is actually a fox, right? And Fossey knows. I guess you could say informed or something. Aware. Aware, I guess. Yeah. Okay, that's one. Um, what's another one? Another one is just, it's really a fox and Fossey doesn't know, right? Mm -hmm. Is there another one? Exactly, it's not a fox. Maybe a, a fox is actually a squirrel in some sense, right? Yeah. Or, or something else. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right? Something like squirrels. Yeah. Right? Because if a fox, if the, the whole is, if Flossie doesn't know, then Flossie might defend even if this creature, even if the fox is quite powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It, is, it could be so hard to say squirrel. Okay. All right. What are the partitions? Isn't it, are we just collapsing? Because it's not a fox and Flossie's aware that it's not a fox. I guess it's, yeah, never mind. Uh -huh. Well, okay, what can, does Flossie tell the difference between these two things? Yeah. Only if, well, what, okay, what can Flossie not distinguish among? It's a fox and Flossie's unaware. Yeah. Exactly right, so no, like, these two things, right? Yeah. If Fossey's unaware, she doesn't know whether it's a squirrel or it's a fox, and she just doesn't, simply doesn't know that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think it's right, right? I think what I'm... So we're collapsing, it's not a fox and Fossey's aware, and it's not a fox and Fossey isn't. Oh, right. You might have two more states. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess... Yeah, I guess we are collapsing those things. Right. If that's okay. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The better way to say is squirrel, Fossey, aware, squirrel, Fossey. Okay? Yeah, right? that'd be the full... Do I want to do it that way? It's, it ends up being sort of the same, I think. Well, you we can try it. You can make it a hard problem to make it more complex. <laughs> but I think this is what's going on. Right? Yeah. If, so if Fossey's un I guess unaware or un you know, she's never seen a fox before, she really doesn't know these things, right? Mm -hmm. But if she is, then she can tell. I think that's okay. How about the fox? Yeah. The bubbles. Yeah, the bubble is going to be what? The fox knows it's a fox or a squirrel. But <laughs> exactly. It doesn't know what it's a fox. Yeah. Is. Exactly, right. It's okay. It's okay. okay, so we've done four things. What, three things? What's the fourth thing? I don't know. We're assuming that the fox is self aware. <laughs> exactly. This is like, there is a whole that's like literally like, like when you know something, do you know that you know that kind of stuff? You know, it's like the movie Inception or something. Good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. 
What are the better Christopher Nolan movies? Academy Award winner. One of the better ones. One of the better Christopher Nolan movies. Some of them are terrible. Or is that a movie? Or is that a movie? Well, Tenet. Have you seen Tenet? It was pretty bad. I mean, Batman was redeemable. I guess so. Tenet was okay, exactly. But Tenet is kind of not really watchable. It's more like a puzzle than a movie. Have you seen it? Yeah. You do know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do I need to specify? Uh, payoffs, usually. Oh, payoffs, and I think put the, this, right? The, should I just make this a bit? Probably. And then I think the utilities, right? And then we'll be done. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's utilities. So I'm not going to do this way. Um, I'll say, um, frosty and stuff. Oh, These first two states, box, box, nowhere, and box, box, nowhere. These are the two first two states, and this will be the third state. This will be the scroll state. Okay, and so um, what payoffs do I want to put in here? I think I'm going to do this. Okay, if box doesn't attack, and it's just like zeros. Okay. Um, if Fox attacks and Flossy doesn't there's, defend. Aren't there three states in the world though? Yeah, but I'm going to say these two both. Yeah. So in both these two states, we'll use these. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so really I should have three major states, so to speak. But I'm saying that it's both states. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. You're trying to make my life look up. <laughs> I know. I know. So, no, let's just no, no. I mean, if you were no, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay. I want to. Yeah. Okay. If we did the thing with the script, I'm thinking about it. So it would, it would really be different. I think it would be okay. Okay. Anyway, what's the best thing for the fox? I think the best thing for the fox is what. To attack and for fault false nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So that's a good thing. I'm gonna choose eight. Oh, and also, I'm sorry, I'm going to change to originally. I'm going to do this a fourth and fourth half. Okay, because in some sense this is just lumping together two things. Yes. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to make it more. Okay. Right. All right, so I'll make that eight and then make this flossy negative. How about this? This is where flossy defends and flossy attacks. Which is this good or bad for Floss here? For Floss? Arguably worth, or could, could be worse for Floss. Yeah, exactly. Like it's worth, it's kind of bad. Like, this is like not good for Floss and probably not that good for the Fox. So it's just. Yeah. Exactly. I'll say that's bad. Make it 12. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fight a Fox. I've never fought a Fox before. <laughs> okay, how about over here? What if it's a squirrel? I'm going to say that if Flossy doesn't defend and the, and the squirrel attacks, it's the same thing, right? Because there's no actual altercation. The difference, though, is going to be yeah. that uh, um, I think Flossy doesn't mind defending against the squirrel. The only difference is instead of the minus 12 reflexes and zero, so Flossy can just hit the squirrel. That's not a little bit worse than really there being no attacks. Oh. You can just bias me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't know. You think the squirrel attack is just as bad as the Flossy attack? Yeah. Oh, so this should be minus two or something like that? No, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. You can pick it once too, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think being attacked by the squirrel should be equivalent to being attacked by the should be and not defending, right? That's <laughs> oh. The minus eight, minus eight, right? That's. I understand. You're saying this should be what? 
No, the minus eight below it should be lower than being attacked by a fox. It should be like minus four well, or something. Well, well, no, the, the result is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The you know, my thinking is so if you foxy doesn't defend, there's no. It just you just lose the eggs. Yeah. That's sure. Okay. So, okay. Uh, we get the squirrel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, so they, this is about the eggs, I think. It's the egg. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We can make this a minus two. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was fine. Okay. <laughs> I had eaten the bits. It's okay. No, I mean. So one, one thing we haven't done in class that we, we, we can do is, it's kind of like how you build your models. You just take this and then make them into a variable and see, like, if I made this a P or an X sure. or something, how much sure. would it you know, change? You know? We could do that. Okay, but anyway, so let's just let's yeah. take it. So the difference between the squirrel and the fox is that simply for attacking, for defending against a fox, velocity input is just a cost. Okay, but if there's no cost for uh, defending this as well. Okay, let's see. What if we're in the world where there's no income information and it's for sure a fox, okay, that is with this world? What do you think would happen? So this is just... It's acting not as a... Yeah, not, yeah, not so... Exactly as a national yeah, yeah, exactly. So look, just philosophy, if you're a philosophy, there's dominance, right? For philosophy, yeah, Defender right. is not a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, minus eight is better than minus twelve. It's a tie. So, not weakly dominates defending. So, Fossey will probably not defend. Given that Fox in the world can attack. So, it makes sense, right? Fox is not going to go up against this, so, you know, kind of violent creature. So, she just runs away. Fox takes the egg, gets the eggs, and that's the best thing. Fox, so the best thing of a fox is to attack with Fossey, not doing anything. How about for sure if it's a squirrel, what's going to happen? Yeah, sure, defense, I'll defend weekly dominates attacking, right? Foxy surely defends, given that was the score going to do. So that's kind of um, pretty straightforward. The interesting thing is like, okay, how do those things interact with each other given this sort of structure, right? Okay, so um, how do we do this? Um, let's see if I can make... Um, let's see, so... What are the strategies we have to think about now? Um, Fossey has how many strategies? Let's see. Fossey can either what? Defend or not here, and defend, defend, not not right now. Okay, so I think. This will say D to defend. Okay, how about the, uh, the fox? What's the for the fox? Yeah, attack it, attack it, attack it. How about uh, this one? Would be like I think like what? Yeah. Attack, attack, not. Attack, not. Sure. Um, can we still assume that there are only two players if there's a squirrel? Oh, I guess, yeah, we can say it's like the creature or something. Yeah, right. In some sense, right, I guess you could say, you could think of it as one player with two incarnations, like, like, <laughs> so like a changeling or something. <laughs> I don't know. The squirrel fox. The squirrel fox. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it could be a squirrel or a rabbit squirrel. Could be both. <laughs> it could be in the quantum, quantum world. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Is there a way to 
It's right. a quantum game theory. <laughs> exactly right. It's inherent uncertainty in things sometimes. Okay. All right. So, um, let's think before doing this. Is there anything which we can immediately rule out? Um, I think there are some things which you can immediately rule out. In this state, this is where Flossie and the it's a fox or fox is aware of that. Is there something which will definitely not happen in this thing? Yeah, she won't defend, right? Defend is, is dominated, right? So I don't think we have to worry about these. Mm -hmm. So we can just do the rest of this. Okay, so let's just do the rest of this. Okay, uh, is there anything about the fox? Will the fox necessarily... Well, can we see what the fox does here? The, the fox is a squirrel. It won't attack. Well, okay, so the fox knows we're here, right? Yeah. Will the fox surely not attack? Not necessarily, right? Because it's possible Flossie might not defend. If that's the case, mm -hmm. the squirrel will go. Okay, so we can see it. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's see. All right, so let's just compute the heck out of this. So what goes in here? This is not, this is the first thing over there, right? Not attack, so it's going to be what? Negative eight. Negative eight. And then this is over there to defend attack. It's going to be negative 12, 12, negative 12, right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to be defend attack because over here this time, right? Mm -hmm. Zero. And zero negative eight. Okay, And then let's see, now we have to do some math. Let's just afford them this, afford them this. Yeah, half of the sum of the first two, and then <laughs> exactly right. So I think this is uh, negative, negative two plus negative five. Negative five. So negative ten. Negative ten. Sorry, but like if you take them both. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Divide by two, and then add half of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this all, all together is going to be negative five over some line. Right. I'm just doing a fourth of this plus a fourth of this because I have it. Or like oh, there are four. Four say like you say that you can have those divide by two. Then yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. okay, for person two, it's going to be what? Two minus three minus one, I think minus seven. Right? Is the clue where it's coming from? Uh, my tablet just messed up, so. Uh, it's eight, maybe a four. Negative eight? I thought I think it's what? Minus, good. Yo, I'm sorry, oh, I made a mistake. This is two, right? Minus three, so that's minus one, and then half minus, that's minus six, so it's all together minus seven. Okay. Right? Minus positive. positive eight. So, yeah. It's half of minus four, which is yeah. minus two, and then half of minus four, which is minus six. So it's negative eight, right? That's two plus minus three plus minus six. So it's, it's half. Oh, okay. okay. Last one is one. Yeah, one that's one to half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is going to be negative seven. Okay. I think that's it. I have this in a reading too, so we can. Okay. How about this? This is N A. We can read it. N A again over here. Negative eight. And now N A on this side, which is. Also negative eight. Oh yeah, it's just simply NA all throughout, right? So it's mm -hmm. going to be just negative eight. Okay. This makes sense. If, if, if the creature attacks all the time, boss is good to do, to just not defend. Okay. How about over here? NA. This is not a tiny. Negative eight. DA is going to be what? It's over there. And the twelve and twelve. And then dn on this side is going to be zero zero. This is going to be negative two plus negative three, which is negative five. And this is going to be two and then minus three, which is minus one. Okay. Okay. What's this? This is n a. Ah, okay. Negative eight. N a. Also negative eight. eight. And n on this side is zero, 0. This is going to be negative 4. Okay. I'm going to do this on the side. 
Okay, this is nn on that side, which is 0, 0. dn on that side, which is 0, 0. dA on this side, which is 0, minus 12. Altogether, this is 0, minus 6, I think. Mm -hmm. right. So we're going to be nn on that side, which is 0, 0. N on, N on that side, which is also 0, 0. And A, which is minus 8. This is negative 4, 4. And then I think all the rest are zeros. Like this is N, N, mm -hmm. 0, 0, D, N, so 0, 0. And then, yeah, D, N, 0, 0. Yeah, because whenever the fox always plays the hands, this is the zeros, right? Yeah, okay. All right. So best response here is what? So best response here, I think, is zero. The best response here is eight. Right? It's the only Nash equilibrium. Zero, zero. This one here, yeah. And And then, and then, and then. Okay. Now, what's interesting? What, what's, 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 this is why this is an interesting issue. Okay, does the fox ever attack? No, right? Fox never does? Why does it not? Okay, why does it attack when in this? So it's not going to, we said it's not going to attack. Hold on. Okay, when it's a squirrel, why does it not attack? Because what? It'll lose. Yeah, they'll lose because <laughs> plus is playing D, right? Plus is defending, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. When the fox is a fox, why does it not attack? It knows it's a fox. Okay, so it knows it's a fox. Maybe I should make if the fox knew, exactly, if the fox knew for sure that Flossie knew that it was a fox, so in other words, this is the state, right? It would be over here. And she knew he would not the Fosse would, would, would just give up, right? The, the fight's worse for the Fosse. Exactly, right, right. So, however, so in other words, if the Fox has these bubbles, of course the Fox would, would attack here. Okay, because Fosse will clearly just give up. Right? But Fox doesn't have those bubbles. Fox has these bubbles. Fox doesn't know whether we're here or here, right? In this state of the world, Fosse thinks that it could be a squirrel if Fosse is going to defend. So Fox doesn't know the Fosse knows, doesn't know where the Fosse knows he's a fox. Yeah, that's what the story is getting. Right? Okay. okay, so therefore that's why the Fosse. How about Fosse's side? Well, we know the Fosse is not going to defend if she knows it's a fox, right? How about here? Why does she defend if she, it's either a squirrel or she thinks it might be a fox? Why doesn't she play NN? Well, actually, she, <laughs> yeah. she basically saying, why does she deviate to here? Well, if she deviates, she still gets zero. That's, there's no reason to deviate. But the way to think about it kind of is, you know, she might as well defend if the fox is not going to attack, in some sense. Okay. Anyway, well, what's the point of this? This is the, this is the, this and the story are the same thing. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm saying, right? It's getting at the same intuition, which is that, and you can use kind of fancy words to talk about it, which is that, like, it's like people say, you know, if you're scared, don't show you're scared, you know? Because why is that? Because even though you're facing a, a, a much greater opponent, if they don't know that you know that, then you're in a better position bargaining-wise, right? Unless, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, except for the case in which you want them to think that you see them as a bigger threat than, than yeah. they are. Because right, right. it'll lead to actions where they'll try to prove that they are, in fact, a fox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just where I'm hanging up on this a little bit because why did the fox bite her? <laughs> no. She, yeah, I had, so, sorry. No, I, go ahead. No, I, need, no, I need to just sit with it a little bit. But yeah, I, no, no, because I, I, I get this setup, but but that that detail is. Oh, so the question is, right. why doesn't the fox just go in and say, say that I'm going to go in because only I as a fox would, she, would do that? Is that kind of the answer you're saying? Why doesn't it reveal that it's a fox? Not so not attack the eggs, but to show proof that it's a fox. I guess it's not a possible no. action. So in this, you're, so you're absolutely right, in this model there's yeah. no like, 
I'm going to show you something because right. here there's no like right. there's no action someone takes which will reveal information. So right. this is all like right. you know. Right. Yeah. So, but you could have a model in which that's the case. Yeah. Right, right. So, but I guess another way to think of this though is if you had this model, it's not just important to show that I'm superior to you, but I have to show that I'm superior to you and be really confident that you understand that. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like it's kind of like. Um, you know, someone like you're a bank teller and someone says, oh, there was a case of this in the newsroom, that someone gives you a little note says, give me like a million dollars or something. And you say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I just don't understand. You know, you know, is this a deposit of money? Also, because like, if you can kind of just pretend you don't understand what the person's doing, even if it's a very valid threat, you know, if you believe this model, then, you know, it can be effective. So, I mean, there, it, does, it does, does depend very much. So one thing it definitely depends on is this thing where Fox doesn't want to go for an all out attack. But if Fox likes the attack, if that's, if the story's not going to work, right? Fox would just go in. You know, but it's all about Fox being deterred by Fossey's sort of something irrational choices with him. You know. So it's not irrational. It's, it's rational if Fossey thinks it could be a score. Yeah. So in some sense, Fossey's giving herself the plausible story that makes it kind of possible for her to defend. Make sense? So, what do you? Which is more interesting, this model or the story? <laughs> you know, the story is simple enough to teach to a kid. You know, but I think it's also deep in a way. And so, my argument is that that story you can you tell to a kid is actually some social science theory. Point. It's like a theory of deterrence in a way, right? You know, to me, it's, it's you know, this the madman theory of deterrence. You know, like pretend that this is. I think a little more interesting than that. So Floss is not being a bad man, right? Floss doesn't have to say, I don't understand what you, you know, she has only understanding, but she's creating, she's creating a way in which, creating doubt that the other person understands, you know, her knowledge of that person. So it's a little more sophisticated, I think. So, you know, so I, I, think, that, I think that's interesting. And so the idea is that, you know, let's see, there, there's kind of other ways you can, other ways you can um, tell the story. <laughs> Let's see. Like, uh -huh. this thing moving. Yeah. How, how different would this be from from a game in which, um, uh -huh. uh, like, there's a cooper, like a Pareto optimal like cooperation scenario. So like if it was a negative AP, if it was so Oh like, yeah. You know, yeah, so Right. So I mean, how is it I guess you learned that by solving the game, but is there no, is no, like no. a negative <laughs> No 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 I, okay so yes yeah, so we can actually put our next example is a little bit like that. Okay. So it's a situation say it's a pure coordination game, right? Okay. So um, you can simply say there's a good role for common knowledge like you know like say that um, just like you know there's a regime and if we all just you know, show up the square tomorrow, it'll be toppled. But I don't, I hate the regime, you hate the regime, but I didn't know that you hate it. That kind of thing, yeah. So things like public communications, like graffiti or like rallies, that's really important. So, so that's much stronger than just talking among your friends, you know, bilaterally. That's the idea. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, so these, these are just little. We get some. <laughs> so these are like ways you can interpret the story. You know, so you know, you can think of it like social construction, like the specific roles. And if you refuse a role, that's one way to kind of, you know, diffuse the power situation. You power requires knowledge. You can think of it as manipulative situation. <laughs> and so all these things are true. But you know, to me, these, this is also a sophisticated game theory presentation. You know. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So um, let's do the next example. This is a, um, a paper which, um, kind of like what you're talking about. This is just a paper which just came out uh, in. It's a sociology paper, but it's just a game. Another game like most papers are about have a game in them somehow. And um, this kind of looks at a very classic kind of a question in um, protest, collective like action, which is kind of like you know, there's a big literature on how social networks. Um, affect mobilization. It's very you know intuitive that 
say we're trying to plan a protest and it makes, you know, people talk with their friends and the, net, the pattern of relationships among friends makes a big difference, right? So you can think of some people you might know, they're kind of like the hubs. They talk to everyone, that hub is very important, you know. Some people who are more isolated, they don't have other people. So, you know, that kind of thing. So um, how do I model this? And so um, this paper is trying to get at this and I use this whole setup. And one of the main things which um, is, so, so you have people, it's like, these are your like, little nodes or whatever, and like say, I, I hear information from people or something like that. So the classic thing is like, if you're more likely to show up, maybe that's going to affect me, right? And so how do I model that? And one very classic way of doing it is simply say like, my probability to show up at the marsh tomorrow would simply increases in your, prob in your probabilities. So like I'm influenced by you. But sometimes people say, well, I'm learning something from you. I learn information, that's what it is. But very few articles actually model that information explicitly. So that's what I was trying to do here. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you learning, so to speak? So in this paper, um, I'm saying that you learn about um, people's willingness to show up. So what I use is this idea of a threshold. So, so I'm think about this way. So say that like I'm here, and here, so I'm person one, and you're person two. My threshold is how many people total I need to make me want to show up. So if my threshold is one, it means that I'm willing to do it all by myself. My threshold is two, I need a partner. If my threshold is three, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? All right. So um, say I have a simple example. There's two people. And say that there's, um, so my threshold is either, um, so I mean, theta one is equal to one, two, or three. Theta two is equal to either one, two, or three. These are all the possibilities. So I could be, this means I'm very radical. I'm willing to do it by myself. This means I need one partner. This means I'm super conservative, which if there's only two people in the world, I'm never going to do it. Okay? So in this game, I'm saying that you can either revolt. So in this case, so this, and it's going to be in this case, well, it is just two people. You can either revolt or stay at home. Okay? Um, I'm going to say that uh, um, omega is going to be, in this case, what? What of all possible things, states of the world are there? So what's uncertain? So to speak. How many people show up? Yeah, yeah, people show up, right? So that's kind of the outcome, right? Which, but, but the baseline uncertainty is kind of like where there are other people who even want to do it or not, right? You mean what is their data? Yeah, exactly. What you're, so you might know your own, but you don't know the people's, right? So this is going to be, in this case, like, um, just, I think if I write it down this way, it'll be just like, um, I think I have a little a diagram in here too. Yeah, it looks like that. One, two, one, three, two, one, two, 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 one, three, two, three. And why is that? Huh? Have we added dimensions? Why is there two dimensions? Yeah. Oh, it's because this is my threshold, this is your threshold. It really should be written like this one, 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 two. Okay. Okay, but I'm just. I'm just no, it's not a twelve, huh? What? No, you know your yes, exactly. So, how do I model that? Yeah. Using my partition thing. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is a manga. My oh, partition. I see. I see. It's going to look like this, which means no. Hold on. That, that's person. Person one is going to look like. I know mine, but I don't know yours. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is not thirty-one. It's three one. That's what I mean. Okay. So I know mine. I don't know yours. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I, what did I specify? I have one, two, omegas, this three, four. I haven't specified the um, probabilities, and I often specified utilities yet, right? So maybe I'll just say the probabilities are equal, just a simplification. So I think it's going to be one on. That's my P. And my U is something which. I guess something like, um, I wrote it as a function, but the idea is that like, um, utility, um, if, you, if, you, so if you play S, I'll just write it down in words, you get zero. So staying home is always zero. If you play R, I guess my player choose something. One, if 
the total number of people who play R infinity is greater, is greater than two. I'm greater than Okay, and you get minus z otherwise. So the idea is something like, if you choose s, you get nothing, just like a baseline kind of thing. If you choose r, you get like something good if the total number of other people is greater, is it greater than or equal to your theta. Okay, is that okay? Right. Otherwise, you get this minus z, which is a bad thing. This is like you show up and none of people are there and you get shot at or something. And assume is that this is this is a very large negative for any negatives. Okay, and I think mathematically, did I write down somewhere here? Maybe it's at the end. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so this is if I play S. So this is my utility as a function of my own threshold and everyone's actions. It's zero if, uh, um, if I stay home. If I revolt, then the total number of people who revolt is greater or equal to my theta. That's what this means. This is like this little hashtag is like a number. Ten years ago, I, did not, I didn't use the term hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Now kids like my, 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 my daughter teaches music and she says, people will say like, she'll say, what is that? The proper thing is A sharp, not A hashtag. <laughs> Kids will say A hashtag. <laughs> anyway, if you revolt and the total number of people is less than your threshold, you get this minus C, which is a negative. Maybe it's just a big negative number. Oh, yeah, it's a really big negative number. And the idea is just, we'll make it simplified. So it's big yeah. enough so that you'll only revolt if there's no chance at all you'll get the minus C. Okay, so it's kind of a strong thing, but it's mainly just make it simple. So if my threshold is five, if there's any case at all that not enough five people, people will show up, I'm not going to do it. I need to have 100% confidence, then I'll do it. Okay. But that's just mainly just to simplify things. Okay. So what happens? I'm going to specify everything. I think it's specified. One, two, three, four, five, and then this is the six, the six. Okay. All right, so now let's say that my um, network looks kind of like this. That is, these people are both isolated. So you only know your own threshold. What will people do? So I'm going to write now in this thing. So if my th I'm person one, I don't know your threshold. My threshold is three. What am I going to do in this, these states of the world? I'm going to play RRS. So in, in this, uh, um, huh? Can you oh yeah, sure, Sorry. no problem. So I'm just so my strategy is going to be a bunch of R's and S's in here. I guess I can write it down this way. Oops. This is what we're talking about with no information. Yeah, exactly. So this is knows there's no communication. Know you only know your own threshold. Right. So the top rows are R's. Yeah, so exactly, right? The top rows are R's because in this case, I don't care. I'm going to do it by myself. And the bottom rows are S's. The bottom ones are S's. I guess this, you can kind of see it in there. How about here? This is the interesting case. This is the only interesting case is when I need a partner. Okay, well, if we were this, I would say for sure I'm going to do it, right? Because you're going to go there for sure. You're a militant. And I'm going to yeah, say, I'm a kind of friend. Who, my friend's a militant. That person's going to show up for sure. And I only need one friend. So I'm going to do it. So you would go do it in this case. But you definitely would not in this case, right? And this one, maybe. Okay. So given if you revolt, it's possible that the other person won't show up. Then this is, we say that the Z is small, yeah, large enough. Why do you say the middle and bottom to the left is S instead of R? Like so if you one? think that their, their mm -hmm. threshold is 1, uh -huh. and they get a positive benefit to going out if it's right? If right. One has succeeded, then shouldn't they be guaranteed to go out? You're saying in this state? Yeah, shouldn't that be R? Yeah, yeah, they're going to play R for sure in here. 
the mindset that's, that's there. Huh? That's <laughs> they're definitely so in this state they play R for sure. They're in Milton. They don't care. They don't need any friends. They're there, period. Well, why don't we play R though? Good question. It's because you don't know that you're in that state. If you knew for sure, you would. Yeah. We don't know that they're in that state. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. You don't know whether the state of the world is this or this. That is, uh-huh. you know your own thresholds too, but you don't know whether the other person's a militant or a conservative. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if they're conservative, they will definitely play S, in which yeah. case yeah. playing R means you'll get the minus Z. So yeah, so I think you would play the S. So we knew for sure it would be different. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Okay. <laughs> So, what about here? What are you going to do? This, this person too going to do. In this states what? Yeah. Okay, all right, they're there, militant. In this states they're conservative. Yes. Um, yes. How about here? What are they going to do? S is similar, right? Similarly, they would love to do it, play R here, but they don't. You know, yeah. They don't know. Okay, so this is it. So this is a very simple model. We predict that, like, the person wants their stretch theta. If the person wants their threshold is in fact they're both one, then they will both they are. Right? We predict that. And what, what happens here? This person plays what? Let me just read it off. This is state one, two, right? Yeah. That's this, right? This person plays R and this person. You see? Mm-hmm. Right, so, it, it, so given my thresholds, I can make a prediction. Yeah. Okay. That'll be test. Okay, now let's change it up. Let's say that person one knows person two's threshold, so we have this same thing. So person two sends a text to person one. What changes? <coughs> and now one knows something, right? Well, how does one's prediction change? One doesn't. Huh? It's, if two knows one, one's partition won't change. Oh yeah, but so but by this, you know, by this arrow, what I mean is that one learns from two. This information flows from two to one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, right. So two doesn't know anything. And is is the information credible? Well, we're going to assume kind of like the whole issue. We're just going to leave aside because we're not looking at the incentives to give okay. information. Well, then those those essays we were talking about should become. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. These are all like little bubbles. They're all little bubbles. Yeah, they're all little bubbles. Just the one now is knows the loss. Okay, so now this is the situation. Yeah. Okay, all right. I think these, these are still pretty easy. Right? What is so what, these are still R's, right? Mm-hmm. And these are still S's. Mm-hmm. This is maybe a little more complicated. Maybe we don't know. How about over here? These similarly these are still R's. These are R's. These are S's. But now this is different. Yeah. Before this is S, but now this person says, okay, I know for sure that person's a militant, I'm going to play R. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. How about here? S. S, right. This is where your friend, you know your friends are conservative, so you play S. Can you yeah. see that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's convenient. How about here? Well, we kind of don't know. It sort of depends on what person two does here, right? But let's try to figure that out now. What, what does person two do here? They stay. Huh? They stay. They stay. They could play R, which they case... They want to avoid the, the chance that... Yeah, exactly, but they didn't really want to avoid that thing, right? So, so they're going to play S, they're going to stay. So then, then person one will stay. Person one will stay there. Right. Okay, so now with this information, before we had this, well, let's see. This person revolt, this person stayed. Okay, so, oh, okay, this is, this is the differences in this one. In this case, this person, well, there's no communication, this person went, so this is R, this is S, right? Now when we have this thing, we can now make this an R, right? Make sense? More so, there's more communication, hence, it's more likely, at least in this the threshold, that revolt will take place. So this person will vote. Yeah. So it wouldn't work if um, one was three and two was two. Would they be able to convince them to three? Also, three and two like this? Uh, yeah. So I did use that. If your threshold is three, 
like there's no way the number of total, there's only two people who roll, so the total number of people is never going to be three. So this means like you're maximally conservative. So, so just two will, might change their position to one, but they will never change their position to three. Yeah, these thresholds are, don't, don't change. They're just like who you are as a person. So there's no like, you know, this is an, like obviously like in a social movement, many people can change and like you can convince your grandmother to be, you know, whatever. So anyway, but just to say we're taking people's kind of, um, kind of issue businesses or their purposes is given. So yeah, so adding this incrimination does make revolt more possible, at least in, in this situation. Okay, all right. How about this way? What happens there if there's communication in both directions? What well, changes? Well, everyone has the bubble. Yeah, these person has small bubbles too. Okay, what changes? Okay, so simply if you have a threshold one, you revolt. Threshold three, you stay. Uh, what happens here? Well, this one's still R. R, right? Exactly. What happens here? That one's R. R, right? Exactly. Now, person two knows about person one, right? Mm -hmm. How about this? Well, that one's that was S. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. This is where two knows that one is conservative. And the other one, that this is also S. The more interesting thing is this, right? What could be going in there? This is where they both have threshold two means they both need partners. Well, it turns out there's two in equilibria, right? Either they both, Either Either they both go or they both yeah. don't, right? Yeah. It could be R or S. But at least, so this is one, so it, there's a Nash equilibria, but at least this makes it possible for both to go. Yeah, before, like with this, it wasn't even possible for both to go. Right. Okay? Right. This makes sense. So that's just all like partitions. It's pretty straightforward. It's all the same thing we've been doing. So this is the paper I have this here. Huh? Yeah. Okay. This is from 1999. <laughs> this is from anyway. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's a sociology. Huh? Sounds like an important journal. Today. I guess so. It's it's kind of like the KGPS. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of KGPS. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like the yeah. Journal. It's so social. Was, huh? Sorry. Was the partition method well known when you published this journal, or is it or was I, that the newer portion of it? Um. It's always been known, but but even to this day, people don't use it very much for some reason. I don't know why people don't use it because I think it's the greatest thing. It's just so simple and nice. And um, what's going on? I hope it's people in chairs. I hope it's all like some sort of earthquake or something. It's sort of disconcerting to see. That. Is everything okay out there? It's like. Question, yeah. Uh, I didn't even notice from right there. Okay, maybe it's all right. Maybe it's just a little bit of a group bonus. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it sounds like a table. And stuff. <laughs> no, but I think that um, oh my God. it's particularly nice to use it in this context because, um, you know, so like the, okay, so the, the, there's a standard, another way which often people use um, modeling of information, which is the idea of types. Which is so like you and I in interaction, I can be either the, the, the kind of the powerful type or the unpowerful type. You could be a person, and the other typical assumption is you know your own type, and you don't know other persons. But uh, um, that is fine, and it's actually it's the basic equivalent to this. But this makes it much easier to look at kind of like um, what people know about other people's knowledge. So with the type thing, it's like my type can change, but the, when I my type changes, it doesn't change what I know about the but about your knowledge. So, so that's what's nice about this. Okay, so, but you're right, it was not, as, it wasn't that common then, and it's still not common for some reason, I don't know why. Okay, if you look at Rubenstein's example, oh, no, okay. This, I thought, oh, here it is, look, if you look at Rubenstein's article, it's actually super simple to write down in terms of partitions, but for some reason he doesn't do that, I don't know why. Like, he comes, comes close to doing it. <laughs> Let's see, where is it? Yeah, so look, see, this is the formal presentation of the types of information partition. So this is fine. This is not a big deal to do it this way. So yes, these are, these are like, the, yeah, this is the, yeah, these are the partitions. 
So let me just set it up the way from the start, but for some reason he kind of sees it as like a little um, kind of a side, not the main thing, but it's the same thing really. Okay. <laughs> it is. Right. Did you have seen it? <laughs> That's with a Meg Ryan. You yeah, electronic now. Yeah. <laughs> is this <laughs> That's funny. That's a 90s movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So this seems semi obvious to you, but what's interesting is that um, this, this has like uh, um, implications which are not low non trivial, I think. So let's take a look at these. Let's look at 1998. Have you seen him when Harry met Sally? Yeah. It's in the same genre as <laughs> that. But I didn't, I didn't see Harry met Sally until like later. <laughs> I remember seeing You've Got Mail when it like it first came when out on VHS, right? <laughs> we watched it at home. At least I guess you remember what VHS is. It's going to date me now. <laughs> Most undergraduates probably don't know what you did. I guess they still kind of remember. I don't know. Where were you born? 2002. Oh, wow. Nice. Did you ever watch it? It hurts. It hurts. I think I do remember a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I spent like a month digitizing all of the our VHS like, home videotapes. Yeah. It's one to one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story that was still in palms that I was like, to take to DVD, oh, which I thought was really interesting. But yeah. They charge you, for, you just buy this little piece of equipment that's easy. Right. Okay. I think you you just do too. let it roll in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I can watch my birth or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So let's look at some example networks. So these are the here. So that. So say that zero one is the two of the decade. So the everyone is threshold two. Okay, and then say so this is like So all this is saying that when people have more information about others, they're more likely to participate. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it you just read this in C P. Do you remember Igor? It was a piece about um, Germany and the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh -huh. um, and basically it was like, why did why did it happen all of a sudden? Right, right, right. And it was because people don't have good information right. about others' threshold, right? Right, right, right? And so when they had the first like first signals that others were willing to right. protest, everyone went out, right? Yeah, exactly. So right. Right. This is like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. What? It was the revolution's paper, right? Yeah. yeah. People have the incentive to hide their type, though. That was the other piece. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, because if it was revealed, then they would be. Right, but it was, it was the same stage, yeah. So right. hide your type, show your type, or participate, don't participate. Yeah. Right, right. So here there's no, like, you're not trying to hide anything. Right. So, yeah, but it's exactly the same. Which is, okay, so let's think about this. So, yeah, it was like focused on who were the early top. Yeah, so it was yeah. Okay, so we were exactly. Yeah. Okay. Let's think about this. Okay, so everyone's threshold too, so we're the state of the world is two, two, two. Okay. What does person one's partition look like? So person one what knows person two's threshold but not three's. And person one knows their own. Right? Makes sense. So everyone has threshold two. So this is the state of the world. What does person one's arrows represent information flow? Yeah, an information yeah. flow, right. Exactly. Yeah, there's three people now? There's three people. Okay. Okay. Very okay. salient. Meg <laughs> <Big> Ryan. <laughs> okay. This is the state. What does person one know about the state of the world? Okay, they know their own threshold. Uh -huh. They know their person twos. Yeah. But they don't know person threes. Right? So person one, according to person one, can be like this. Right, this is person one's bubble around two. Right? So I think that the notation we have for this is this is person one's bubble around two two two. Okay, how about person two's bubble around two two two? What do they know? They know their own threshold, mm -hmm. and they know what person wants. So it's actually the same. same. Yeah. Yes. What's person three's bubble around two, two, two? Three. They, they don't know it. Yeah. They know twos, but not ones. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it could be the four is the maximum persistent. Uh -huh. Okay. So. What are people going to do in this state? Okay. 
Well, I think there's an equilibrium if these persons one and persons two play R, are they happy? Yeah, they're okay, right? Because they know the base person yeah, special yeah. two. They're not gonna they don't actually commit person three, right? Right. What about person three? Okay. They're, what are they going to do? Well, they know that if they play R, say here, they can't play, first of all, they can't play SR, you know, they have to play R, R, SSS, right? Mm -hmm. If they play this, okay, are they going to do that? Do they want to do that? Well, in this case, they would, they would get the one, right? They'd be happy. In this case, too, probably. Yeah. How about these? And the, the last one is, it makes it, it, yeah. Well, well, if they know that the other person, the person two is twos, then... Yeah, okay, so yeah, they know person two is two. Mm -hmm. And they'll play R and all these. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. They'll play R and all Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, let's see. I think... Mm -hmm. Okay, let's think now. What is person... So, yeah, in this case, person one plus one big S. Right? The whole thing is, what will person two do in this case? Okay, so let's think about person two does a state depends then they have to choose them. Oh, I see. Yeah. They don't know person. Yeah, exactly. So there's this whole thing, right? So in this case, this thing, this is includes what? Four, two, one, four, two, three, and four, two, three. Right? That's right. Okay. What is is person two going to play R here? No, right? Because it's possible that person two could for all person to you could be here, right? In this case, at least people play S, or clue, 2 doesn't work at all. So 2 is going to play S now, so. Mm -hmm. right. Since 2 played S there, what is person 3 going to play in this bubble? S. S, right? right. Except they play R, there's a possibility we'll get the minus C. Mm -hmm. so they play S. Okay, what's the point? So in this case, this person goes, this person goes, but this person doesn't. Okay. Even though their threshold two and their this, they know another person has threshold two. They know that they took about their threshold two themselves and one other person, but they still that's not enough for them. Why is that? Mm. Okay, they're thinking, oh, if that person goes, I would definitely go. But what's the problem? I know that I know that they're you know they're not conservative, I know that they're willing to revolt. However, what? They don't know about me. Yeah, exactly. Right. So they don't know about me, right? And also that, you know, they have, I know that they have this other friend, but I don't know that what well, this other friend is. Maybe. Yeah. And so I'm person three, I know I'm two, I know you're two, but I don't know whether you have enough support to go, right? You don't know about me, and you know, yeah, I know you have a friend, but that friend, I know who you but they're, they're considered, right? So I don't know, you know. So even though revolt is possible, I know revolt is possible, I don't know that you do it, right? From all, from all I know about you, it's possible that you you think you're the only liberal in the world, or something. even though you do. Makes sense. Okay. All right. So. Are they aware of the structure of network? Sorry, what? The structure of network. Right. Do they know? Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Like we we assume. Okay, I should have said that. Yes, we assume that they do know the structure. Of network. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so another thing is the way to think about this is. Um, when we start the partitions, um, if they didn't know the network, there would have to be states of the world in which the network were different. Mm -hmm. right? So we're saying that the network is just common knowledge, and that's, that's, that's a simplification to me. Okay, so in this case, we have this. Okay, so anyway, just getting at the idea that this is how the kind of um, common knowledge thing works. Now let's do the second one. Okay, so this is where... Person one, two, three. Okay, so now we add another little node. So now, no, sorry, another little edge. Get everyone's special is good. Okay. Now person three knows a little more. Okay, one and two know the same. Okay, but person three knows more. Now what changes? We get more this state of the world. Person one's and two's bubble is going to be, they don't know person three. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. Okay. That's all. 
And what does person three know? One, two. And the person three knows everything, yeah? So their bubble around this is a six. Okay? Now, we said before that it's possible that for, for persons one and two to play R. What is person three going to do? R, yeah. Okay, so what's the difference here? The difference is now that three not only knows two has threshold two, and one knows threshold two, he knows, they know that they know each other. Mm -hmm. right, so they know that they, person three says, is one gonna go, is two gonna go? Well, I know that they know each other, and I know they both have threshold two, so therefore they're gonna, that's enough support for them. Right? Even though they don't know anything about me, that's enough. Okay, so in this case, that additional arrow kind of makes music for Why? Sorry, why does that reveal? Why does that reveal that one and two know about each other? Um, because kind of like what Zan said, we assume that the network is known. But it was known before. No. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, but in this case, okay, three knows their thresholds too. They know the two thresholds too. Okay. So they know. Three knows that there's enough people out there to make the vote possible. Yes. Okay. But when they actually, does three actually show up or not? For them to show up, they have to be confident that, every, uh, that person two will actually show up. Right. But they think, oh, well, I know person two is their show two, so therefore that person, they need a partner. That partner is not going to be me because yep. from my, I only know person two could think I'm conservative. Yeah. That person needs, the only, the only other part is this person, but I don't know whether that person is their show. So now, you, okay, now, now, right. Yeah, but now you do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. How about this? How about this last one over there? And then I'm going to special two. Okay, so now in the state of the two. What is person one's bubble around that? Yeah, they only know themselves. Oh, yeah, so it's quite a large bubble, right? Yeah. It includes things like, I don't know, two, one, two, I don't know, two, three, two, three, four, two, two, three, three. It's, you know, it's basically they only know themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of a big thing. Person two's bubble is also going to be kind of large, right? What is person three's bubble going to look like? Um, just just the same thing. Yeah, person three knows everything. Exactly. Yeah. What are people going to do? Everyone's going to stay home. Everyone's going to stay at home, right? Even though, so we're in here, person one thinks I'm two, but there's a lot, there's, for example, yeah. two, four, four yeah. is in there, right? Yeah. It's two, four, four, no one's going to show up. Yeah. Therefore, I'm not going to show up. So, yeah, in this case, everyone's going to stay Sad thing is person three knows, hey, I know everyone, not only do you have two people with threshold two, but three people with threshold two, we can definitely make this happen. However, I know that you all don't know anything, so they're probably sure. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is, huh? Yeah. If there's sound, no, we would reveal that information. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, so we want to let them Exactly. Okay. So, the interesting thing, though, this is the interesting thing for kind of empirical application. Right? So, notice that person three's information in these cases is the same, right? So. The only difference here is, in this case, person, because person three is aware of the information that wanted to share with each other. Okay, so this is a testable thing. So like, you can ask people, um, you show up to, pro to a protest and say, hey, um, are, there, are there people here? Did you come because you had friends who were here? And they would say, yeah, that seems good. Then you could also say, well, do the friends who are here know with each other? Yeah? And if you get some significance, that supports a this model. Right? See what I'm saying? Yeah. But if it's a simple model of influence, just like I, I look to my friends as some influence, but I'm saying there's no reason why yeah. why it should be different. You see what I'm saying? Like, so there are a lot of models that are simply like, if I simply write regress my my action on a linear combination of everyone else's actions, then you would not find this. Right? This is saying that um, it's not just who my, who's influencing me, but also how they influence each other. It's not that interesting thing. Okay. So um, yeah, so so maybe it's not a maybe it's a strong assumption to say that I know the network among my friends, but at least um, 
maybe there's situations where it's relevant. Maybe you know, maybe it's, if I assume that then it, it can be a relevant thing, and it does sort of make sense, right? It does make like if I if I see a lot of friends and I think they're all going, but I know that they're all kind of in their own little world, maybe I think they're not going to be mobilized. Whereas if I know that they're all kind of tight, I'm the same thing they're going to do. Okay, so um, that's kind of the, the so there's a bunch of other examples. So um, this is similar. So it's all coming out of this model, and I. Again, I was trying to take seriously the idea that people communicate. This is a similar kind of thing. Say that people have threshold three in this case. Everyone has threshold three mm -hmm. in the square. Um, and so those ties are unidirectional now? Yeah, it's like I mean, uh, a bi yeah, bi bi direction. Bi -direction. Exactly. Bi -direction. Um, yeah. Okay. So like, I'm here. I know that this person is threshold three. I know I have threshold three. You have threshold three. Mm -hmm. So I know the three people have threshold three. Yeah. So I know that revolt is possible. Yeah. Whoever do I actually revolt? Well, I will revolt if these other two people go, right? But what do I know about your knowledge? Well, you only know about two and four. Yeah, exactly you know right. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't know, and two doesn't know about four. Yeah, exactly right. I will, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm going to put myself in your shoes. You, I think my friend will go if they had two other friends with threshold three, but I, that person could be conservative. So that person, so therefore, so this could, even though every single person knows that the revolt is possible, no one goes. Because no one knows that other people know that their vote is possible. Right. Whereas if we have them here, these people have threshold three, it's kind of like that example over there. I know that you have threshold three, I know that you have threshold three, I have threshold three, but I also know that my two friends know each other. So the idea is that this network's actually better than this. Okay. So that has an, oops, that has an empirical implication also. Okay, so let's see. So uh -huh. Can we say that clustering helps? Yeah, exactly, right. So exactly. So that's the thing. So like, okay, this is so my little, um, I did some little um, things. So say that now they were doing a, a very small amount of dynamics where um, in each, each time period, you know information from your, not just your friends, but your friends' friends. So like each time period, you get a little more information. So exactly. So, um, okay, let's see. Some simulations. Where's my thing? Okay, so this is I just take I think a bunch of random networks with like 20 people. And this is just like what it looks like. So like in time one, um, the people with threshold one, they of course they do it automatically. Then, so as time goes on, of course in general the people with lower thresholds do it earlier. But what's interesting is the people with high thresholds, there's much more variation in whether they do it or not. Right? If you have low threshold people, you, you just tend to do it early on. If you have high threshold people, it sort of depends on whether your friends are, which sort of makes sense too, right? Yeah. So another way to say it is like, um, high threshold people are much more influenced by the network position than no threshold people. Okay. Now this is the thing we're talking about. Say that they're, say these are, this is a classic kind of uh, distinction between networks made by this guy, um, Mark Granovetter, who's, uh, this is kind of like the number one uh, um, most cited social science paper in Google Scholar. It's like very. Is that right of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah no. So it's just kind of a fun. Weak ties, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Weak ties. So the class is a classic thing where um, I'm not sure if it was him or somebody else. The person went, me and Mark went to a grandmother went to a high school and said, write down all your friends and from best to worst. So if you do the network with like the top two, what you tend to find networks like this, whereas mm -hmm. it's more cluster. That is, my best a best friend of my best friend tends to be my best friend. If you do the network with like number seven, eight, number seven, and friend number seven, number friend number eight, it tends to be like this. That is, my seventh best friends, their seventh best friends, tends to not be my seventh best friends, tends to be to like somebody else. So, um, therefore, this one is so called a strong link network because it represents strong ties, as your close friends. This is like you're, you're more like your acquaintances. It's a little confusing, bad terminology right from the start because. It's not about the strength of the relationships, but more about yeah. the, the, the descriptor of the network. It's actually strong versus, it's more like clustering versus scattered. That's probably a better way of thinking about it. Anyway, if you were thinking about which networks are better for like the spread of disease, which do you think would be better? Like if you wanted? To spread the disease? Yeah. The weeks going, yeah. Yeah, this one right here, because it's like quickly, like everyone's scattered, right? The people are traveling around. This is slow because you kind of have a double counting, right? Like, 
Like I could give you a disease, but then you give it to your friend, but that friend is somebody I already gave to, so what, you know. So. Okay, however, so if we think of like social movements as analogized to, you know, spread of disease, which people do all the time, then you would say, well, this should also be better for social movements, right? This is like fast divorce. And, and it, in fact, it depends on the the other, right? Yeah, exactly. Like spreading an idea yeah, exactly. Or knowledge about the event where you actually get to look about it. Exactly, right, right, exactly. There's some research, I think this is kind of interesting, like, if you want to find out about a job, this network is better. Because, you, I think you usually find out about jobs, not from your close friends, but from an acquaintance, because that tends to be much more people, right, kind of. But finding a job is different from finding, going to social movement, exactly, right? It's a, it's a different thing. Because in so, finding a job, you don't care whether other people like find a job as soon as you, right? This one, is, for a social movement, it's actually really important that you know what other people know, and that gives an advantage to this. Okay, so this is also again, empirically testable, and in some sense, and this is also true, more or less. That simple versus complex contagion. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, okay. So there's another guy who, um, this guy, um, what's that guy's name? He has a story about this too. It's basically the same idea, or it's not the same idea, but similar idea. His idea is something like, oh, what's, what's the guy's name? I, I, um, I hung out with him for a while. <laughs> His idea is something like, uh, if you think of it as simply the probability of uh, like spreading coming as a probability of P, then this would be better. But if like um, contagion requires more than one hit, kind of, yeah. then this is better. Yeah. So, um, well, Stentola, that's his name. Right. Stentola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, this is, that's a fine model. This is another model. <laughs> this model emphasizes um, uh, this knowledge of knowledge thing. Right, so in here, um, it's, yeah, so the nice thing about that is it kind of gives the micro foundation to what you're talking about, which is like what network is better for, for making something happen depends on the, the underlying strategic issue, right? Like, is it, Literally like a disease, or is it more like you know one kind of knowledge? So we in a in a situation where everyone needs to depend on another person being there, like a social movement, then common knowledge is important. Then the So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> and Son Tola again once presented his paper. He he said this thing. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you find that these are better for social movements than these. So why is that? He says, so I have this complex system. I I did say this, but I said, hey, I answered that question in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> But that would have been a little rude, but anyway. But yeah, so it's good to have the same kind of thing. So, but anyway, so the, the, um, all I'm saying is that this stuff can make empirical thing, you know, reality, right? It's something which could happen, you know, again. And so, um, and it shows to me at least the value of a little bit more, like, so the, the, the most obvious model you would be something like a linear combination, like uh, my choice to go to demonstration simply depends on like a linear combination, like a, like a the regression on what others do. But this shows that there's a value for doing a little more, right? And say that you are actually getting um, something out of this, some mileage out of this, this modeling framework. So, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, yeah. Well, this is, yeah. This is, so, for example, here, so this is P equals one, this is P is the probability of choosing somebody close to you. So this is like the strong networks where it's very close to here, if everyone has threshold three, then the, the strong networks are better. If everyone has threshold seven, everyone has a higher things, then, then actually the speed, so to speak, of the weak networks is better. So, yeah. Okay. That's it. <laughs> I'll try to, I'll put Damon's uh, Centel's paper there to you, you can see it too. Yeah. So you kind of also, it depends on the thresholds, right? Yeah, of course. Want the right arrangement of thresholds. Yeah, exactly, right, right, right. Yeah, so it's at least some combination of those two things, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's not just the strength. Right, exactly, right. Yeah, if everyone had high thresholds, then, yeah. then the contagion model, so to speak, the disease model is better. But, but more than if it's everybody or nobody, honestly, like, it's, it's like there's a strong, there's a high threshold person, there's like eight of them all kind of within oh, yeah, these yeah. nodes, or are they all sort of their own little useless? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Not useless, sorry, but like inactive. Right, right exactly, right, right. Like the actual arrangement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The ideal thing is kind of like, you know, some people with low thresholds who are clustered together. That's important. Yeah. You know, you don't want them scattered. Yeah. So like, some people say like, what is like Facebook or whatever. The nice thing about Facebook is, it, like, for example, you, there used to be, there was social media before Facebook and Twitter. It was like listservs. Yeah. 
but listservs didn't have this kind of clustering quality, right? Yeah. It's like you just send out a message to a thousand people. They don't know necessarily who each other are, right? But Facebook, you both have this kind of widespread, but also this kind of, you know, cluster thing. But friends are friends, to be my friends, sort of more transitive. So that's kind of why people say, you know, Facebook is more powerful. That kind of thing. Well, that's a good interesting thing about like Nextdoor nowadays. Also, is Nextdoor is is more like the lesser, but it's still important to get rid of that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's it forces you to verify I see. your your neighborliness, so you know that the people that you're Oh, I see. Or at least with it, like some group, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't. I should learn more about that. Yeah. Okay. I've heard next door is good for selling stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's got a lot of. It's got a lot of like people, oh you know, commenting about people walking by and hoodies and <laughs> all, that, all that other fun stuff. <laughs> like poli-sci rumors. <laughs> For your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> they've, had, they've had like a lot of bad PR about it. they've they've now since introduced like they, they introduced they they, they they had that issue and then they introduced like a flag for like racial sensitivity button and everybody just pressed well, at least I'm interested to, to study would have been to study like when do people mis misuse basically oh, interesting. Use this button because it was just like a disaster. People oh. just flag everything as racist. Oh I see, I see. I mean like people like people like not in the sense of people were overly concerned about it, just to be clear, but like people just sort of use it as, as a, yeah, as oh, just, I don't like this comment. Oh, I see, yeah. I see, interesting. Um, but, but anyway. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Goodbye. See you. <laughs>